Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. So today we are going to be running cows and calves through the chute. So the other day I went through and pulled all of the bales, or some of the bales out of the pole shed that we kept in there for storage to make room for the round pen and our gates. This has got to be illegal. Now when the vet gets here, he's gonna be bringing his chute. So we're gonna back that in there and set, get that set up. And we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Typically what we do when we run cows through the chute, calves through the chute this time of year, is that we castrate the steers, the bulls, and we vaccinate them, give them whatever they, else they might need. Uh, we make sure that they're all tagged so we know whose is whose. And the first group that we're gonna be running through is my steers and my heifers. So I've been trying to keep back my heifers. I'm not totally sure. I'm undecided on how many of my heifers I'm gonna actually be selling. Um, I try to keep some back to grow the herd as well as curb death loss because you expect about a 4% death loss year to year. So by keeping back your heifers, you're maintaining your herd and in my case, growing it. So I'm also going to be running my cows through the chute, which is something that we haven't really done much uh, in recent years. And the reason for that being is because I'm going to be preg checking my cows. Uh, since I have an aging herd, what I wanna be doing is I want to make sure that the cows that I'm feeding are being productive. So uh, Roxy is one of my older ones. I don't doubt that she's bred but it's something to do to make sure that all your cows are bred back because every cow that doesn't produce a calf is just another year that you're feeding them. And that really adds up over the course of a year. So by preg checking, we're gonna be going through, I'm going to be culling out any of my cows that aren't bred. So we'll be tagging them with different tags to mark them so we know which ones to sell when the time comes where we can take them to auction. And um, fingers crossed, hopefully we don't really have too many that need to be culled out but you never really know. So I've got a couple new heifers that we're gonna be running through. Um, my cows and my heifers really aren't too wild. Um, we are gonna be running dads that are in the pole shed through the shoot today. And there is that wild one that ran me over uh, in our last video. So we're gonna be running them all through the shoot, tags, banding, or castrating and preg checking are the big things. So the vet's on his way here. He should be here probably within five minutes. Once he shows up, we'll take the bobcat and the shoot out, set that up and get started. First group that's going through is mine. My steers and my heifers. All right, Matt, what are you shooting them up with today? Uh, we're doing a four-way, a black leg, and a tetanus for the bulls. Okay. And then... The pour-on is for... Pour-on's for lice and worms. Okay. So, the usual. Yep. And the, the replacement heifers will get a brucellosis vaccine. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's gonna be one, two, and it's red. Good buddy. Ball. What do you know, dude? You're the bull of the year. Get 
Yep. Yep. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, there we go. Come on. Rocket. Okay, eighty three dash twenty eight. Yep. Watch out. Now it's Travis's and Dad's turn. So with this shot to get the metal tag? Yep. Yeah, the tag's just the visual that they got the vaccine. Yep. With with a tattoo. Oh, that's what you're giving? So a vaccine. The metal clip is that. That's vaccination. Of course, the loss is. Green one, two.
So this guy's getting his horns cut off. You do it because you don't want them hurting any of the herd later in life. It's usually viewed as a disadvantage if any of them got horns on them. Is that lidocaine? Yeah. Okay. So this guy's getting his horns cut off. You do it because you don't want them hurting any of the herd later in life. It's usually viewed as a disadvantage if any of them got horns on them. Is that lidocaine? Yeah. Okay. If you can, you want to catch them as young as possible because it's less stress, less pain. Yeah, most of them are pulled. But, seems how it's out of one of my cows, and I don't know the genetic background of his mother. Seems how I bought her at a beef cow, a bread cow sale a year ago. It's kind of hard for me to know. Yeah. yeah. More of a destructive thing. Destructive. It's learned. It does make it more less aggressive. It's just, okay. It's not like a cow that learns how she can kick. Well, she learns how to kick. She keeps doing it. Yeah, she'll kick. Yeah. All right, we just got Dad and Travis's calves through. So now we're gonna run my cows through the heifers. They're gonna get vaccinated, and then that'll be that. We're just gonna preg check the cows, and we should be good. I'm so glad we split the spot too. I'm kind of regretting it and almost not putting it in the three though. Come on. Come on. Get. Go. Come on, girls. Go. Come on. Go. Come on. Hey. Oh. Come on, girls. Turn around. Get up there. Come on. Come on. Shut that gate behind you, please. Do a reset. Come on. Turn around. Come on. Where do you think you're going? Go! 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 Get Come on! on. Let's go! Yeah. Times like this, I wish we made it two feet narrower. Hope you ate your Wheaties this morning. <laughs> so how do you check to whether or not they're pregnant? Uh, this is an ultrasound. So I'll reach in, scan them, find the baby, just like a human ultrasound. Okay, and that's what the goggles are for too? The goggles are Bluetooth from the machine to the goggles. So oh, that's there. neat. Yep. So High tech. Can you see it? Yep. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I actually can Bluetooth it to my phone or two other devices. Really? So I got a tablet at home and I can do it too in my phone. Dude, that's neat. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Back her up. He wants to drop the... Oh, okay. Neat.
So she's open. Take her yellow. Yeah. You got the final call. If she's open and you don't want her, get her. Yep. I get her. Hmm. No vaccine for her. Nope. Ready? Yep. She's ours for 48 days? Yep, open. Two, okay. Open two? Open. No well, kidding. They're not all open, they're not big problems. Yeah. She got poured, so now she's ours for the next 48 days. Oh. This one. Go ahead and this tag. One too. Right down, Hannah. I guess. Come on. Come on. Sixty-four. When did you put the bowl in? Uh, July. Open. Are you kidding me? Open. Yep. Hey, you got one. Got Break one. Thirty-five. That's it. Yep. Okay. Thirty-five. Red. Pregnant, four months. Open. 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 Can it go in the house? I think so. We got all the calves run through the chute. Now, it's been getting an ongoing building issue, but last year around this time, uh, once we got the cows in the barn yard, what happened was the water stopped flowing. Water stopped coming out of it. So we had uh, Schmidt's plumbing come out, dig out portions of the line and blow it out. And eventually they got it working again. But I think just sitting over the summer like it has um, left it to plug up again. So out of my place, we've got uh, basically just rust in the water. It's called ochre and it builds up in your pipes and everything. So what we're doing now is I went out, got a compressor and now that we have power down here by the water, it's a lot easier too, but um, Dad made an adapter for the water line. You can see it there. Yeah, I know that's an electric shock waiting to happen, you know. But um, we're letting it build pressure, and then what we're gonna do is flip that valve, and hopefully it's gonna be enough to blow whatever's plugging it out the other end. Last year when we did that, did that, Travis was standing up in there when we did it, and when he came out, he looked like he was covered in diarrhea. <laughs> so, we're letting that build. Travis is taking off the upper end right now. I'm sure he's going to stand way, way back when we blow it, but just got to wait for it to build up pressure. Fire in the hole. Pressure's going somewhere. Let's try this one more time. Oh, well, that's going somewhere. Go see if that worked. I just turned the water back on. We blew it out. We got the water fixed and the cows seem to be pretty happy. So the water is an issue that we've been having since over a year now. Um, we had the plumbing service come out and they blew it out and it started working again. So this time we made an adapter of our own to put on the hose to blow it out and it worked again. So I expect this time, hopefully in September, uh, before I bring the cows in, um, whether 
the ochre in the water just sits in the line and clogs it and then we have to blow it out every year i mean not totally sure what's causing the issue i personally think that where it tees off and it comes down into the barn here there's actually another water that was down in the barn um where it tees off i think that the ochre when it comes through the line has a tendency to build up in there and that's probably why we're seeing the issue with it just slowly slowly stopping um, I knew that was an issue even in July. I noticed that the water wasn't flowing as fast as it was and I've been keeping a close eye on it and there's always been water in it until yesterday morning uh, when we came out and actually started working with the cattle. Uh, we noticed that it wasn't flowing at all. So um, now that we got that fixed, still going to keep a close eye on it, but I expect since the cows are continuously using it now, it'll probably stay clear. But again, once it sits over the summer because the cows are going to be on, on pasture i expect that it's probably going to happen again so at least we'll have that adapter for next time so there's a bigger problem going on here in the herd and uh, i'm trying to decide how to proceed from here and the problem is is that 15 of my 39 cows in here are bred so that's definitely going to throw a damper on this coming year it actually doesn't mess with me this year it messes with me next year because the calves that i should be having this spring um, i'm not going to be having as many so next year i mean it's not going to bankrupt me or nothing um, presuming that most of them live i can just turn around and sell all 15 or how many ever i end up with and that'll that'll pay the cattle bill and everything it's just really putting a clamp on my income um, but I can keep them covered, um, uh, depending on what I decide to do. We tagged them yellow because I planned on calling them out, but when the majority of them are now tagged yellow, uh, I figure that I'll probably end up keeping them until next year. And then I'll have them pre preg checked this coming year. Once I figure out what's going on, whether it is the cows, um, our initial s suspicion is that it's the bull. So I think I might have him checked out. So I'll keep you guys tuned on what's going on with the herd and uh, just watch out in our next video. Um, hopefully we'll do some investigating and figure out what's going on. So anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time. It's now been seven years since Grandpa passed, and I'm sure he never saw Potosi or Grant County Going from a place that values farmland preservation to a utility district for the state of Wisconsin. So for those of you who haven't heard, there is a very large solar project that is going in north of the farm and we're going to be surrounded on two sides by it. And we're pretty concerned because there's a lot of unknowns with solar projects this size. There's not a lot of studies done, done on them. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is A, not only the environmental factors with runoff being this close to the Mississippi River and uh, the effects that that could have on fish and other wildlife like migratory birds coming up the river. But I'm also worried about heat island effect. So there has been a study done conducted on a five megawatt facility, which is tiny in scale to the one that they're putting in here. And there was an observed heat island effect inside the uh, facility itself, but they claimed that it dissipated the further away you got from the project. Okay, but as a neighbor on a facility this large, how is that gonna affect our crops? And are we gonna see any un unknown effects from this? And uh, how is it gonna hurt us if it does? So personally, I am against a project this size. Um, I don't think that they're doing this the right way. I think that they should be spreading solar power uh, into smaller projects across the state instead of putting them in large areas and then building the infrastructure to take the power where they need it because they're putting in these large transmission lines where, you know, they, had, they could just utilize shed roofs. We got a shed roof over there that could have solar power on it. This one here could have solar power on it. The house could have a solar solar panels on one side of it and uh, you drive around the countryside and that would be a good way to distribute the power to wherever it's needed if you just did it over buildings like that i mean even walmart has over seventy thousand acres in parking lots they could build the infrastructure pretty easily to build carports and put the solar panels over the parking lots and then that would benefit the people who are parking in Walmart parking lots because it's shielding them from the sun in the hot months or the snow in the winter months. Just saying. 
I mean, I used to be pro solar, but I'm anti-solar in the fact, the, the way that they're doing it. I don't believe in these large projects that are building them all in one spot. They're taking good farmland out of production when they could be distributing it just by putting the projects onto people's roofs and putting it where it's needed instead of building it away from everybody, considering that we're down in the southwestern corner of the state and they're building these large transmission lines to take the power where they need it instead. So that's just my two cents on the project itself. For those of you who are interested in tuning in to the public meeting on February 11th that they're holding, because from my understanding, the PSC of Wisconsin pretty much just slammed this project through. It's pretty sad knowing that you can pretty much just pay off the right people and you can get whatever you want done. Because I'm pretty sure everybody's that had a say yes or no on this is getting a pretty decent chunk of money from it uh, from the town county and i'm sure the state is getting money out of it through the psc as well for those of you who want to leave a public comment or tune into the public meeting to learn more about it go down into the description i'm leaving a description of what you can do down there to uh, listen on the project or to leave a public comment and um, i highly encourage you to do so i'm going to be tuning in when it's going on um, that's all there really is to say about it just remember that an area the size of Iowa has been lost to urbanization since 1992, and that's only gonna get worse. So by putting these solar projects on areas that are out on arable farmland, it's not a good idea. They should be putting them on rooftops, building carports over Walmart parking lots where they can provide shade from the weather um, is really the way to go, honestly, after looking into this. Um, I was pro solar when we first started this, but after researching more about it and with the heat island effect concerns, considering that the only real study out there showing heat island effect was done on a five megawatt facility, when this is a 200 one, there's just not a lot of information out there about them. And we're pretty much the test dummies for everybody. So I highly encourage you to tune in, but that's pretty much all I wanted to say about that. Um, I don't want to delve into it too much because I could just go on about this all afternoon. So anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys.